2020 Portuguese Grand Prix finishing up. Lewis Hamilton stands alone at the top of Formula One with 92 wins. Kind of expected going into it, although maybe not how we figured we would get there. Interesting start to this race. Let's get going. Lap number one has a lot of uh, excitement right out of the bat. Checo gets spun by Max. There would be no penalty on that racing incident. Uh, Max kind of felt they didn't have any line to go. Checo coming around the outside of him. They collide. Checo spins out and would start the beginning of a very interesting race for Sergio Perez. And first lap, Botas gets around Hamilton. So we're thinking, hey, maybe we have a chance of having a different winner here. At the end of lap one, lap two, Carlos Sainz has an amazing start for McLaren. McLaren looked really good in the first opening 10 to 15 laps of this race. And Sainz goes to the lead and would hold on to it for about six, seven laps. Slight rain being reported would not be a factor in this race. We would have a lot of drivers asking about it. It threatened at times, never really picked up, never became a major issue. Kimi Raikkonen also notably has an amazing start to this race. He goes all the way up to sixth place in his Alfa Romeo and would have a, a pretty solid race for Kimi all day long, but his start was just absolutely brilliant. As the next 20 to 30 laps would, would go by, Kimi kept getting passed one by one, but his start really sh deserves to be on this board because it was fantastic. Valtteri Bottas retakes the lead, like I said, six laps into it over Carlos Sainz. Hamilton would follow right behind him, and McLaren would start going the wrong way in this race. And we'd, ha we'd see some, some issues for Lando Norris further down this board. Carlos Sainz winds up having a pretty good race in this one. Has a really solid points finish, but he would have to battle for it. Lap 14, tire wear becomes an issue. Drivers starting to report it. Most notably, Max Verstappen's tires were absolute garbage by the time we got to lap 14. Uh, it would be a while before he'd come in the pit after that. We have some drivers do some crazy strategies, like down here we'll talk about Esteban Ocon not pitting to way deep into this race. But we find out that soft tires have really bad tire wear, and tire wear was going to be an issue early on in this race. And really, Hamilton was the only driver who could figure out how to make those tires last for a long time other than Esteban Ocon. So interesting tire wear. Lap 18, Lance Scroll has a terrible race today. Absolute horrendous race. Uh, after missing the last two Grand Prix, it looked like he was out of practice in this one. Him and Lando Norris collide, and it creates damage to both drivers' cars. They both have to box. They both wind up going right to the back of the pack because of it. Lance Stroll gets a five-second penalty for that contact with Lando Norris, and he would add to that by also getting a five-second penalty for exceeding track limits. So overall, a really, really bad day for Lance Stroll. When we get further down the board, we'll also see that they wind up retiring him later. Lap 20, Hamilton takes the lead back. Uh, and this is where we're going to talk about that tire wear again. Valtteri Bottas just cannot hold on to the tires as well as Lewis Hamilton. I know everyone talks about, you know, Hamilton's in the best car, the best equipment. So is Valtteri Bottas. And, and there's no reason why Bottas couldn't have won this race if he was able to manage his tires better. And I think that's a really important fact that they talked about in the commentary of this race. Hamilton's just on a different level when it comes to protecting those tires on the longer runs. And he passes Botas there, and we never see Hamilton again. He goes way off, finishes way ahead of everyone else. Pierre Gasly, also having a fantastic race at this point, gets up to fifth place uh, in lap 20. He would actually wind up finishing P P5 in this race as well. Uh, Pierre Gasly is having such an amazing season. And, and when you look at what his teammate's doing, he's light years ahead of his teammate. But again, we have to talk about the fact that he looks way better than that number two seat in Red Bull. Conversation is not going to go away, especially when Albon has a day like he had today. Pierre Gasly, though, has looked brilliant. He's looked aggressive. And all the things that Red Bull kind of criticized him for last year, he's fixing this year. Lap 32, Hamilton at this point is eight seconds up. Like I said, he gets way ahead of everyone else. Uh, Charles Leclerc, having a great day in that Ferrari. He winds up finishing P4. Really kind of quietly has a top five day for Ferrari. Looks fantastic. At this point, he was P3. He had not pit yet. Sainz and uh, Raikkonen have a fantastic battle going on right around this as well. I wanted to put it on the board. Nothing major coming of it, just a really good racing battle. Carlos Sainz had the faster car, but Kimi Raikkonen was holding him off for several laps just because Kimi Raikkonen is, is the OG legend here and just does a fantastic job holding off Sainz. Created some really good entertaining racing in the middle of this, this uh, Grand Prix. Lap 34, I'm starting to look at the leaderboard and trying to find Alex Albon. Where is he? So he's back in 12th place, one lap down at this point. And again, we're talking about why is Albon so far off? 
I do think that qualification is a large reason of why he finds himself in trouble. He just finds himself so far behind the eight ball to start these Grand, these Grand Prix, where Max Verstappen is up in that top four, top five, and Verstappen had a bad start to the day too. He fell back really early on and struggled for grip and had to have battle his way back up into that podium spot. But Alex Albon, when he's messing around back in the midfield, I, I just don't think it gives him a chance, and I think that just compounds throughout these Grand Prix. And he finds himself a lap down, winds up getting lapped by his teammate Verstappen, and not a, another not a good day for Alex Albon when Pierre Gasly's having a great one. So lap 42, Valtteri Bottas boxes, and he wants soft tires. And he says, let's go in the soft. Lewis Hamilton has already made his pit stop at this point, and... Mercedes puts him on the hard tire and tells the commentary group that that's not what Mercedes does. That's not how we do business. So Valtteri Bottas is probably aware of that. There's probably team strategy, team orders, team rules that go into that. I don't know how I feel about it. On one hand, you're a teammate, you're a part of a team, and if the team has a way they run business and you've signed up to be a part of that team, as Valtteri Bottas has, I, I understand that. On the other hand, from a competitive standpoint, why not give Valtteri Bottas the best chance he can to win? I mean, it's it's a mixed, you know, I, on the team unity thing, I kind of like those team orders, but from a, a individual competitor standpoint, it kind of bothers me that Valtteri Bottas isn't given a chance to go on soft tires and try and, and attack for the win. Uh, as we found out, it wouldn't matter. Soft tires look like crap today, uh, to put it bluntly. <laughs> so I don't think it would have mattered. I actually think it might have hindered his performance. But either way, interesting uh, thing way things played out in the Mercedes uh, garage there. Lap 47, Checo comes out in 6th. He came out further ahead than I thought he would. I actually thought he was going to come out behind Gasly and Ricardo. He doesn't. He comes out uh, ahead of them and winds up having a pretty decent day considering that he started this day being, you know, spun out, whether, you know, you think it was Max's fault or not. They put on soft tires, though, and that would come back to bite Checo. I think if they put on the, you know, hard compound or medium compound or whatever it might be that they had in there, um, I'm not sure what he was on at that point. Uh, it would have mattered, actually, because he already had a pit stop from his accident earlier, so they didn't need to worry about tire compounds there. Anyway, they put on the soft tire. It doesn't work out for him. He winds up dropping two more spots in this race, but overall, uh, high up in the voting for driver of the day for a good reason. He has a fantastic points finish in a day that was disastrous for Racing Point, considering that um, Renault wound up having a pretty good day again. Carl Sainz kind of saves, salvages it a little bit for McLaren, although McLaren, a huge missed opportunity today, I have to say, and kind of through no fault of their own, Lando Norris gets taken out, and Carlos Sainz battles back, but he has some issues too. So overall, uh, could have been a huge day for McLaren, but um, for Racing Point, though, huge missed opportunity, and Checo salvages something decent out of it on a day that Lance Stroll just completely loses his mind and has a terrible Grand Prix. Lap 50, George Russell having a really good battle for to try and get back up into the points. He spent a lot of the day in the points. He was as far as 7th at one point, um, so it was nice to see him up there. I know there's a lot of conversations about the possibility that Russell might lose his ride at Williams. Be really a shame if that happens. I hope that's not actually true, but they talked about it in the broadcast, and that usually means that there's definitely some validity to those rumors. Uh, I also just want to put it up there because they talked a lot about George Russell during his Grand Prix. But he didn't show up on TV, ever. Like, his car was never shown until this point in the race, uh, with only 16 laps to go. Uh, they talked about him boxing. They talked about how good well he was doing up in 7th. They never showed him on TV. And I thought that was very weird, that we, we just never see Russell on television. They finally put him on TV right around there. Lap 52. Albon lapped by Verstappen. I talked about it up there. Not a good look, obviously. You don't want to be getting lapped by your teammate. Uh, when you have had no mechanical issues, you've had no collision or accidents, you're just not racing that quickly. Um, it was noted, notable and noted in the commentary that he was able to keep pace with Verstappen once Verstappen passed him, but really just not a good look to be getting lapped at this point. And again, we go back up to here. Pierre Gasly finishes fifth, looked aggressive, which was the big argument against him and Red Bull last year. Um, it looked wise where Checo which I'm about to talk about in two seconds, but Checo, I'll just go down to it. Lap 64, he's trying to pass Checo, and Checo defends him extremely hard, cuts right down in front of him, and Gasly is able to avoid a collision there, hold, up, you know, hold off from crashing right into him into that corner, and still winds up making the pass a lap later, puts himself up in the fifth, and just takes off. I mean, Gasly looks so much more mature than he did a year ago, and it's really fun to watch. Lap 54, going back real quick, Lance Stroll retires, um, they gave a reason of why he retired, but 
the truth is, Lance Stroll had, and they said he had damage on his car and all that stuff. He just had a bad race. This reminded me a lot of Alex Albon being retired two weeks ago. Um, they said it was power issues for Albon then. They called it damage for Stroll. This was a situation where a driver just looked so bad throughout the day and had things snowballing and compounding on top of each other. The team just tried, decided to get him off that racetrack, and I don't blame them. Uh, at this point, in lap 54, Esteban Alcon finally pits. Uh, it really looked like he might go to whole Grand Prix without actually coming in for pit. And, you know, they get him back out there. He has a pretty decent finish. Very interesting strategy. Safety car comes out, and Esteban Alcon might have gotten a podium. I mean, that was the strategy they were going for. I think at the Portuguese Grand Prix with that awesome racetrack, which I hope that Formula One goes back to, a, there was a high probability of a safety car, and then we didn't get it, which I thought was pretty interesting. That's the strategy they were going for. It doesn't quite play out for them. Still a pretty solid day for Esteban Ocon, and impressive for how long he went without pitting. And finally, Lewis Hamilton holds on to win the race, obviously, so far ahead of everyone else right now, and he now sits alone at 92 wins, ahead of Michael Schumacher, ahead of all the other legends out there. And, you know, you have your mixed feelings of fans out there. The fans are just frustrated because Mercedes is so far ahead of everyone else and they think it's a car and equipment. But you do have to take a look at it and see what he did to Valtteri Bottas today. Bottas was ahead of him in this race, could have won this race, but Lewis Hamilton's just better at, at managing tires and race strategy. And he defeated his teammate because of that. I don't think Valtteri Bottas is a bad driver by any means. I think he's a very good driver. Hamilton's just on a totally different level. Maybe if you have a Max Verstappen in that number two seat, he can hold on to tires a little bit better than Botas as well. I, I don't really know, but either way, like it or not, Lewis Hamilton, 92 wins. Congratulations to him. Congratulations to Mercedes. I, I think Mercedes locked up the constructors this, this week. Um, I'll double check on that. But either way, a really good Portuguese Grand Prix. Once again in Formula One, the midfield battles were fantastic all day. The beginning portion of this race was, was absolutely a blast to watch. Fantastic racing. But overall, the top three was kind of predictable and a little boring again. Um, but to be the man, you got to beat the man, right? I think a wise man in WWE said that once. <laughs> Either way, Hamilton wins. Portuguese Grand Prix in the books. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please can consider giving me a like and a subscription. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.